Hello. How are you wonderful folks? Look around you. Have a look around you please. All the wonderful colorful attires of different countries, all the different nationalities. More than 80 different nationalities present in this room. If I'm not wrong, I've been told like 75 plus. Is that correct? Yes? Just look around the sheer diversity in this room. Please take this in. Take a moment. Have a look around. Excellent. Right. Who knows? The person you're looking at, who knows? Might be the next uh, Barack Obama. The next um, um, Prime Minister Trudeau. The next Modi. The next Donald Trump. <laughs> the next Malala Yousafzai. Yeah. Who knows? The next Eminem. <laughs> Got a few people sitting up there as well. Good afternoon to you all. This is not going to be a speech. Okay? A speech cannot last one and a half hours. We've got a lot to cover, not enough time. This is going to be an interactive session, so I will need your full participation. I understand it is late in the evening and you are waiting to go back to your rooms and you know, get on with the other things that you want to do here, but I need your full attention for the next one and a half hours. Can I have that, please? Would that be a yes? Yes? Some of you are not pretty sure. My friends in the back. Is that a yes? Good. All right. So, I will ask you to do there are certain exercises I will take you to, through to do and I, I remember in the year uh, 2013 when I was in the Philippines and we had about 800 odd people there too, roughly, and I got them to do an exercise and I then spent the next 10 or 15 minutes to try and get their attention back, okay? <laughs> so time is precious, I want to use every minute here, I need your assistance with one very simple thing, after an activity is finished, all I will do is this, I'll make this signal saying, can I have your attention back again please? And I would want you to raise your hand as well. Let's practice this. Can I have your attention back again, please? And you will notice as your hand goes up, your mouth will automatically shut, right? <laughs> okay, can we practice that, right? Can I have your attention back again, please? Excellent. So I do want you to meet people here. You know, my personal experiences, and I love youth conferences, the energy, the sort of, um, you know, the enthusiasm, the um, and sort of networking. And by networking, I mean actually talking to other people. How many of you have been doing that? Raise your hands. All right, good. Not just sharing the same Wi-Fi connection or, <laughs> or adding more friends onto Facebook. You know, it's these days, I mean, you know, with, social media is great, but you've got to find out where the boundaries, where to draw the lines, because sometimes you get too obsessed in the numbers, right? Youngsters these days are calculating their self-worth. Their what? Self-worth based on the number of likes that they get in social media, right? These are the times we're living in. We have to be very careful that you are much more than the carefully cultivated personality that you display online. Would you agree with that? And it's when you begin to discover that much more, when you begin to disregard, if I may say, the opinions of other people, or the opinions of the experts, or what people are going to think about this, that is when you truly get in touch with what is really inside you. And trust me, young friends, young ladies and gentlemen, trust me, the world needs it. The world needs your brilliance, your authenticity. More than anything else, the world needs your authenticity. People who have ever made a difference, right from Mahatma Gandhi to Nelson Mandela to Malala Yousafzai, you know, whatever spheres of influence, people who have made a difference have always been the ones who listen to their inner voice. All right? So, before I go any further, I just want to try this little energizer with you. Put both your hands together, like in this position. Take a deep breath in. Deep, inhale as deeply as you can. No chanting involved. All right. <laughs> All right. Deep breath in, please. Inhale, hold, exhale. We we'll do it two more times. This time with a smile, if you will, please. Deep breath in. Hold, exhale. Now, shake someone's hand on your right and left. Look them in the eye and say, hello, how are you, partner? <laughs> Can I have your attention back again, please? Aha, uh -huh. give yourselves a round of applause. You're a wonderful audience. So we will begin with reinforcing certain messages to each other because I'll be gone in a few... Um, in an hour or so, but I do believe that it's when you convey a message to someone else, it stays longer with you. So here's, once again, shake the hand of the person on your right and left, look them in the eye and say to them, the world needs your brilliance. The world needs your brilliance. 
Excellent. All right, good. Thank you. Can I have your attention back again? Excellent. So I'll start with my presentation, which is on the screen, the two screens on your right and left. I am happy to be among achievers, future entrepreneurs, future leaders. You know, this, is, this makes me very optimistic about the future. I'm an optimistic person, but when I meet youngsters across the world, I am full of hope for what lies ahead of us. Because I believe some of the most pressing problems, ladies and gentlemen, some of the most difficult problems of our times, our hope lies with young minds who have the courage to think differently and to follow their inner conviction, their inner voice. There is a voice inside you that speaks to you all day long which tells you, I feel this is right and I feel this is wrong. No parent, teacher, preacher or friend can tell you what your path should be. But listen to the voice inside. It already knows what is. But listen to the voice inside. It already knows what is. How many of you are in touch with your inner voice? Raise your hands, please. You haven't listened to it, right? All right, okay, good. Which is a great start. <laughs> I'm here to talk about a purposeful life. I think it was Socrates who said first, an unexamined life is not worth living. And I think these are very profound words. What did he say? An unexamined life is not worth living. And this is what I would like to do with you for the next one hour or so, is to help you re-examine your priorities. What do I want to achieve here? Help you re-examine your priorities. Because would you agree with me, human beings, we achieve results based on our priorities. Do you agree with that statement? We, whatever, if you want to change the outcomes in your life, you must change your priorities. Any fitness freaks in here? Raise your hands, please. Say aye. Any fitness freaks? Yeah? Any um, people who love um, social service? Aye. All right, thank you. Now, whatever is, if, whatever is on your priority list, the results you're getting from your life thus far will depend upon your list of priorities. Stay with me here. A young entrepreneur who has put all his life saving into his new business and his parents' money, a lot of people counting on him, on his success, okay? Would you agree morning, noon and night, sleeping, eating, drinking, all the time he's going to think about his business, yes or no? How to make it successful. A young mother who's just given birth and is caring, looking after an infant, would you agree that her number one priority is the baby, yes or no? She could kill to protect the baby, right? Human beings, we achieve results based on our priorities. If we change our priorities, we change the outcome. We change the results we're getting thus far from our life. So in order for us to find out, figure out a new direction of where we want to go, how I want my life to be, and I do want you to live a life that you are proud of. Any Australians in the house? Raise your hands, please. <laughs> Woo, quite a lot of them. Excellent. Have you heard of the book called The Five Regrets of Dying People? Anyone heard of the book The Five Regrets of Dying People? An Australian nurse called Bronnie Ware. Look this book up. And she was in um, palliative care looking after people who were dying, right? And she did an informal survey asking these people on their deathbeds, if you could live your life again, what would you like to change? What are your top five regrets at this point of time? What was the survey question? What are your top five regrets at this point of time? We don't have time to go through all five. I'll give you the number one, which is perhaps the most important. Majority of people said, and listen to these words carefully, please. I wish I had the courage to lead a life true to myself and not what others wanted of me. I wish I had the courage to lead a life true to myself and not what others expected from me. I don't want you to do this mistake. Wise people learn from the mistakes of other people. Yes or no? We don't have enough time to make all the mistakes on our own, right? Therefore, we must learn from the mistakes of other people and this top number one regret. And I'll also tell you as a life coach over the last 10 years from my experience, hello, I can tell you this, the worst emotion of all, the worst emotion, toxic emotion, is regret. There is not a more toxic emotion known to human beings. I wish I could have done it differently, all right? So once again, deep breath in, please. Shake someone's hand on your right and left. Look them in the eye and say to them, live a life that you're proud of. Do it now, please. Do it with conviction and energy. Live a life that you're proud of.
All right. Can I have your attention back again, please? Excellent. Thank you. So, a purposeful life. How many of you can claim you are leading your life on purpose right now? Raise your hands and say, I. Excellent. How many of you will never raise your hands no matter what question I ask? Raise your <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> you should be in politics. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How many of you have ever experienced being on purpose, even if it's for a few hours, a few days, or a month? Yeah, all right, just before submission of your, you know, some of your reports or something, before making a presentation, before going on stage? <laughs> Public speaking, they say it's dangerous business, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a survey done in the United States asking people their top three fears. Number one was the fear of death. Number two was the fear of, sorry, number one was the fear of public speaking. Number two was the fear of death. Inference, some people would rather be dead <laughs> than go on stage and make a presentation, all right? So this is not easy because you're making yourselves vulnerable, you know, with a thousand people sitting in the room, thousand opinions about me, which I don't care about, right? <laughs> I'm here to do and share with what I believe in, okay? But you've all experienced being on purpose. Is that a yes? Would you agree you're more clearer, more sure of yourself during that time when you're on purpose? You know where you're going, you're more confident, you use your time more effectively when you're on purpose. Okay, what I want you to do, I want to take you through a small 60 second activity to help you see what being on purpose is like. Do you like to play a little game? Yes, deep breath in once again. Yeah, I'll keep doing that again and again. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give you 60 seconds with a little assignment, all right? 60 seconds to do this. Now don't start before you completely understand the game. 60 seconds to look for the color green in this room. All right, don't start yet, don't start yet. Wait, 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 all right. I have two conditions, how many? Two conditions, number one, don't stop in the 60 seconds, keep looking for the color green. You don't have to come and tell me, just keep a mental note of all the different places you found the color green, okay? Don't stop, that's number one. Number two, uh, the least obvious places. All right, so if you have uh, color green right in front of you, I just don't want you to say, okay, there's color green in front of me and that's it. No, I want you to search for the color green in the maximum number of places, okay? Number two, in the least obvious places. And number three, I don't want you to stop for the next 60 seconds. Will you do this for me, please, yeah? And then we'll discuss the, what are we gaining from this experience. Your time starts now. Go, 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 look for the color green. Let's go, let's go. It will not come to you. <laughs> You have 10 seconds to go, keep going. In five, four, three, two, one. You can sit down, please. Okay. Few follow-up questions. Number one, did you find the color green, yes or no? Yes. Some of you are not sure at the back, yes or no? Yes. Did you find it in a lot of places, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> right? Here's, here's what I want to convey to you here. Two or three very simple things. When you have intense desire, intense desire plus persistence plus action. What are the three components? Desire, action, persistence. D-A-P. Desire, action, persistence. What is it? Desire, action, persistence. You get the results. Now in 60 seconds, if you could find the color green, shout it out some weird places you, sh you saw the color green. Shout it out, please. My microphone, all right. How many of you were noticing that before? <laughs> before? Probably not, in 60 seconds, yes. Okay, some of the weird places, you saw the color green, raise your hands. The, he's carrying the, sorry, the what? Ah, the lipo, the, the flag, the Indian flag, okay, great, what else? Yes, the lady over there. The exit signs, thank you. Yeah, good to know the exit signs always, isn't it, right? <laughs> I think these days we're changing times, we should put an additional notice along with the exit. Please leave the building first. You can tweet about it later, <laughs> right? <laughs> These are the times we're living in. What else? Your tag, uh, this thing. Okay, what else? Tiny stickers on other people's badges. Okay, great. Uh, the desk in front of you. Good, excellent. You're wearing a green sari. Lovely, excellent. Yeah. Okay, great. The flag in your hand. Great. What else? Come on, shout it out. Something really weird. Yes. <laughs> Eyes? Yours or someone else's? <laughs> All right. 60 seconds, you got enough time to look in other people's eyes. Yeah. Sorry, the what? 
The water bottle, excellent. Okay, very simple. You found the color green, a lot of places. 60 seconds, your mind was on purpose, yes or no? There's a part of our brain, ladies and gentlemen, which is called the RAS. What's it called? RAS, the reticular activating system, okay? When you're on purpose, your mind filters out all the external stimuli and everything that you need to achieve your goal becomes relevant and everything that is not helping you to achieve your goal will go into the background. Okay? You're with me on this? When you have a clear goal in front of you, it's like your internal GPS system. In fact, let me add, a, I'm, I'm a, I read Rumi a lot. How many of you know the ancient Sufi poet Rumi? No? Okay, only a few people here. He's supposedly the most uh, famous poet translated in English language in the United States. Uh, but he had this beautiful saying, which is very powerful. I want to share it with you. He says, what you are looking for is also looking for you. Aren't those beautiful words, powerful, profound words? What you are looking for is also looking for you. What you're looking for, you're going to find it, but you, that thing is also looking for you. So if you're looking for opportunities to serve and make the world a better place, you will? You will? Find them. I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, uh, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. How many of you would like to pursue greatness in your life? Now you, don't, you don't do that by pursuing greatness per se. You do that by being of service. Anyone can be great because anyone can serve. So if you're looking for opportunities to serve and make the world a better place, I don't know. You want to be a stand-up comedian? You want to make YouTube videos? You want to be a chef? You want to be a politician? You want to be a sports person? You're, you know, different callings. But in your own special way, you'll be able to uplift the world. And the world needs more lifters, yes or no? We've got too many leaners. We need more lifters, a few people. But when you come in contact with them, when you spend time with them, you feel better than before. You feel more optimistic about the world and what lies ahead of you, okay? So you all experience what being on purpose is like? Yeah, in these 60 seconds, when you have a clear goal in front of you, you, you remove all the distractions. You weren't using Facebook or WhatsApp or Twitter during this time. You were focused on your goal and you made it happen. As simple as that. This is what I mean by a purposeful life. Imagine if you could do the same to other bigger things in your life. That internal clarity, I call it the magic of purpose. Now, what I mean by the magic of purpose is this. Suddenly your challenges seem small when you have a big purpose, okay? How many of you had to take long flights to get here? Raise your hands, please. All right. Now, how bad was it? Tell me. Was it like pretty bad? Now, pretty bad now that you look back at it? Or when you were going through it, what were the sort of emotions you were going through? Like, come on, why did I sign up for this? Or things like, probably not, because you had a specific purpose being here. Yes or no? Yes? And I'm here to tell you this from a personal experience. The bigger your purpose, ladies and gentlemen, the smaller the problems will appear to be. Because you can fit everything in the frame of reference. You'll say, this is nothing. I know where I'm going. This is the magic of purpose. All right? When you're on purpose. And you can choose any direction whatsoever you wish in life. Take a look on the screen, please. These people are also on purpose. Hunting for... Figured out what they're doing? They're hunting for Pokemon Go, if you haven't figured out yet. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> On purpose, right? Now, with due respect to Pokemon Go before the fans take offense, <laughs> right? This is a choice, yes or no, right? Um, what's the famous author's name, uh, the richest author? Harry Potter series. Uh, Harry yeah, uh, J.K. Rowling, she said this beautiful, beautiful quotation. She rose from almost poverty to a time where she couldn't pay her house rent to now the highest paid author ever on planet Earth. She said this, she said, the quality of your life, the quality of your life is the sum total of the quality of the choices that you make. Okay? The quality of your life is the sum total of the quality of the choices that you make. You want to change the quality of your life, you change your choices. What do we have to do? Change our choices. Small, insignificant choices. You change them, you add them up, and you get a different outcome. One of my main motivations of being here today is this. I know even, for, even among the 10% of the population in this room, 
Even if you're able to make a 1% shift, a what? A 1% shift in the right direction, in the years to come, the benefit of that 1% shift is going to be huge. Okay? Just like the airplanes. Modern airplanes, you can leave them on autopilot a lot of the time. Some pilots even do it at takeoff and landing, which is not right. <laughs> but for a vast majority of the time, you can leave them in autopilot. The main job of a pilot or the captain is to do course correction every now and then. Yes or no? Yeah? And that is your job for your life too, is to do course correction. And remember this. Today, in 2017, if you are even 1% off, if you're even 1% off of your intended target, in the years to come, the difference is going to go bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it'll be a harder thing to do. So the right opportunity to grab which direction your life is going into is now. Once again, deep breath in, please. Say hello, partner. Hey, hello, partner. Partner, the time is now. Let me hear you out loud. Partner, the time is to take charge of your life. The time is now to take charge of your life. I'm reminded of this interesting story, this, um, would you, can I have your attention back again, please? I'm reminded of this interesting story, this conversation between uh, a mother and her young son. Because human beings, some of us, we take too long to take responsibility and to take charge of our lives, right? So this mother, every morning, 6.30 a.m., would be trying to wake her son up. Son, wake up, it's time to go to school. No, mom, I don't want to go. <laughs> Everyone hates me at school. I don't want to go. The teachers hate me, the fellow students hate me, really don't want to go. Mom, give me one reason why I should go. And the mother says, son, I'll give you two. Number one, you're 55 years old. <laughs> Number two, you are the principal of the school. <laughs> Therefore, get up now. <laughs> Some of us, we take too long to take charge of our lives. And that's what I'm asking you to do today is to take charge of your lives. All right? Take charge of your lives. One of my friends is a clinical psychologist and I usually ask her what happens in your sessions, in your counseling sessions. She told me, Simerji, this is actually very simple. 90% of the answers of my clients can be summarized in one simple category. And that is this. It's all my parents' fault. It's all my parents' fault. It's mom and dad's fault. If only, if only. And she sometimes has to remind her clients, hold on, you're 55 now. That happened 40 years ago. You know, you have the, do you agree, human beings, we have the opportunity to reinvent ourselves? Yes or no? Any given time, it's all about making a decision, right? A gentleman that I deeply admire, his name is Tony Robbins, and I've attended a lot of his programs. He, he says these three very powerful words, decisions change destinies. What is it? Decisions change destinies. Not ideation, not thinking, not ideas, not discussions, not strategies. Decisions change destinies. It's when you commit to something. All right. The magical purpose is this, ladies and gentlemen. Deep breath in once again. I got a little different energizer for you this time. Shake your hands out a little bit for me. Yeah, spread them out, please. Shake them out as vigorously as you can. Shake them out, shake them out. And uh, make this uh, rising sound that goes whoa. Yeah, all your worries fly away. <laughs> all right, good. This is what I believe in. You're on purpose. What you gain, number one, the bigger your purpose, the smaller your obstacles appear. Number two, purpose will remind you this very important thing, that where you are today is not where you will end up. Where you are today is not where you will end up. You are going somewhere. Just like your flight here. Yes or no? When it was getting too difficult, you were able to remind yourself, you know, look into this hall and all the exciting things that you're going to do here. You are going somewhere. Not, I don't know of a more positive human emotion than I am going somewhere, right? If you're going somewhere in life, the problem, your negativity, your depression, all these things, they begin when you feel I'm stuck, right? What's the feeling? I'm stuck. Some of my coaching clients will call and say, Simarjit, I feel I'm stuck. I said, no. Or they will rather say, life is stuck. They journalize, right? Your perspective, you put it out to the entire world. If I'm feeling I'm stuck, I'll say, life is stuck. And I have to remind them. I have to tell them, do you know right now, this planet is moving on its axis at thousands of miles per hour? And then it's revolving around the sun, and there's galaxies being born and being destroyed. Life is not stuck. You are feeling stuck. You with me on this? Life is never stuck. Universe is never stuck. It's all, always creating, always destroying, but always moving. 
It's when we feel we're stuck, we give up and say, okay, life is stuck for me. That's never true. All right? So you must remember, the best gift that I can give to myself is have a future direction. Because that's when I know I'm going somewhere. And that is very exciting. You will look to the future with the excitement and wonder of a child. How many of you are still in touch with your childhood dreams? Raise your hands, please. Still in touch with your childhood dreams. It's very important. One of the best places, one of the best activities that I know is to close your eyes and visualize for a few seconds what did I really want to do when I was a young child? Because that is when your unadulterated consciousness, when you wanted, when you had no limitations, when nobody was putting things into your head that this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, would be the greatest adventure of your lives. A story goes in Greek mythology that when the Greek gods among themselves, when they were talking that where should we put the secret of human beings' success? One of them said, let's put it on the Mount Everest, the highest mountain. The other one said, no, he'll get there. Man is a very resourceful creature, this human being that we have created. He'll get there. The second one said, let's put it in the, in the depths of the deepest ocean. And then again, said, he'll get there too. Let's put it on the moon. He'll get there too. Let's put it on planet Mars. Elon Musk will take us there too. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know about that. <laughs> but this is what, and then they finally decided, why don't we put it somewhere where he's least likely to look for it? Why don't we put a human secret of success and well-being where he is least likely to look for it, and that is within himself or herself? And this is the greatest adventure I want you to take in, to tune into what you really want to do, okay? But some of you may be saying, <clears throat> or purpose what? Me? I'm not good enough for that. Purpose is not for me, it's for, it's for talented, gifted people. Ever heard that statement, that reasoning? Yeah, it's for talented, gifted people. I'm here to tell you this, that you are gifted too in your own special way. This is one again, so once again, the partner moment. Deep breath in. Partner, discover your gift. Say it now, please, to the person sitting next to you. I want to do a simple exercise, which involves raising your right hand up in the air, please. Right? Close your eyes. I won't steal your phones, I promise. All right, deep breath in. When I count down from three, two, and one, without looking at your people around you, I want you to turn your hand towards north. What you think is the direction north without opening your eyes. Three, two, one, go. No cheating. Okay. Eyes closed, please. Great. Keep your hands where they are, open your eyes, and look around you. <laughs> yeah. Can you please capture this moment? Thank you. Put your hands down, please. Thank you. Now, this leaves no room for... Some people, it was very simple. North is up there, right? <laughs> Not always. <laughs> this leaves no room for judgment for judging or criticizing other people, right? I have my own interpretation of what my true north is. And as long as I'm in harmony with my true north, that's fine. This is what I want you to understand. I've, I read this saying somewhere which, which said, um, we all are gifted, but some people never open their packages. We all are gifted, but some people never open their packages, and they're always constantly comparing it with other people. Comparison is a thief of joy, ladies and gentlemen. Comparison is a thief of joy. Deep breath in once again. I want you to visualize you've just won $10 million in the lottery. Put yourself in those sort of emotions. Yes, will you please? $10 million. Woohoo, you just got the news. Show me how you're going to feel. Yes, great. Right. The very next moment, hello, the very next moment you also hear the person that you hate the most has won $50 million in the lorry. Ooh, how are you going to feel now? Yeah, yeah, why is that? You still have your $10 million. Why are you now feeling bad? You still have your $10 million. Someone else got their 50 and that's fine. You dislike the other person, that's okay. That's a matter of opinion. But you still have your money. 
Are you getting what I'm trying to convey to you here? Yes or no? That your gift is unique and special to you. Stop comparing it with others and be true to yourselves. Be true to yourselves. Follow your own inner calling. Ladies and gentlemen, when I've, I served in different hotels across the world, I was an expo hospitality guy. Marriott International was my first employer in the US, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I went to hotel school in Sydney, Australia, by the way, in the year 2000. Woohoo! Yes. Lived in Dorkin, UK, United Kingdom. Yeah, where are you guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for four years. Lived in Dubai for two years. Anyone from Dubai here? My friends over there, excellent. And uh, then I moved back to India and now I travel all across the world and I'll tell you this. When I was making the switch from being a hotelier to a public speaker, my uncle, you know, bless him, he's 84 now, at that point of time he was 74, he asked me, what do you want to do? Manufacture speakers? You know, we already have a pretty good manufacturing facility in the city next uh, to us. You can't compete with them. I said, Uncle, no, I don't want to manufacture speakers. And be a speaker. What is that? I mean, that's a good hobby, but how are you going to make money out of it, right? So people cannot even comprehend. Here's why I, I want you to be in touch with your own purpose, your own vision, because others cannot see what you can see. This is Helen Keller's uh, definition of vision. So eyesight is what you see, vision is when you can see the unseen. And the worst thing in life is having eyesight but no vision. Helen Keller said this beautiful words, the worst thing in life is having eyesight but no vision. Eyesight is what you can see, vision is what you cannot see. You with me so far? Is that a yes? You gaining something? All right. So purposes for talented, uh, gifted people. I'm too young, too old to do this. You're never too young, too old to do anything. Never. Malala Yousafzai was never too young. She don't wait for the right opportunity. The world's oldest marathon runner, 104 now, took up professional running at the age of 82, ladies and gentlemen, 82. When he was slipping into depression because he was all alone, didn't have a purpose. Purpose is the glue that holds our lives together. Purpose is the glue that holds us together. Without a purpose, we begin to disintegrate. The world's oldest marathon runner, his name is Foja Singh, 104 right now. He started professional running at the age of 82. The world's youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner, Malala Yousafzai, you're never too young, too old to follow your inner calling. All right? And I believe that you are the creators, innovators, disruptors, thinkers, leaders, entrepreneurs of the future who will make things happen, make this world a better place. That's how you were born like, yes or no? to change things, to challenge the status quo. We need your goofiness, your creativity. You don't see different uh, young kids uh, sitting and wondering, getting depressed about, oh my God, what my, oh my OMG, what my purpose is going to be in life, right? <laughs> They're just doing what they have to do and that's the spirit I want you to be in touch with once again. You know, your creative force inside you, which does not accept any limitations, your true creative force, you're all born entrepreneurs. Anyone from uh, uh, Bangladesh here? Raise your hands, please. People from Bangladesh, Muhammad Yunus, the founder of the Grameen Bank. Raise your hands if you heard of this gentleman, Nobel Prize winner. Muhammad Yunus, founder of the Grameen Bank, banker to the poorest of the poor in the world. I'll play a video about him later. And he said this statement, he said, we are all born entrepreneurs and leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, what was the unemployment rate in the year 10,000 BC? <laughs> or zero, another way to look at it. The unemployment rate in the year 10,000 BC, there were no jobs. We were hunter-gatherers. And as the Industrial Revolution happened, something was put into our head that you must do what you're asked to do and leave your brains outside the workplace. But now times are changing once again and corporations and organizations, they need your brains once again to make things happen, right? One of the, uh, the entrepreneurs that I deeply admire in Silicon Valley is Elon Musk and he's challenging, changing a lot of different industries at the same time. Raise your hands if you've heard about Elon Musk, right? SpaceX, Tesla, SolarCity, so many companies. Interesting thing. Travel, air travel has not made significant, uh, you know, uh, no innovations in the last 10, 20, 30 years. In terms of speed, we've had innovations with safety and other features, but speed, we're pretty much stuck how people transport themselves across continents. Interesting thing, a different way to look at things, the next groundbreaking things which will happen in terms of travel might not be accelerating our speed up in the air, might be on the ground. The hyperloop theory that is, is theoretically is, is there at the moment, that, so it's just a different way to look at things. So your inner GPS, once again, deep breath in please. 
you have an inner GPS. If you program in it where you want to go, just like find the color green activity, it can take you there. Now, I do agree, sometimes your inner GPS can malfunction, which is all right, <laughs> right? Which is okay, but then that's how we learn. That's how we uh, make the mistakes. As long as you don't make the same mistake twice. Making mistakes is okay. That's part of the human experience, all right? Don't beat yourself up if you're making mistakes. As long as you're not making the same mistake again and again. Fall into a ditch once and it's an accident, right? Fall into the same ditch again, perhaps another accident. Fall into the same ditch again and again, it's a choice. Fall into it again, now it becomes a habit. You continue falling into the same ditch, now it's a part of who you are. Now it's become part of your own fabric of existence, of who you are, right? So you have to be careful, make mistakes, that's how you're going to learn, how you're going to identify. How will you know the things that you do want to do? By perhaps also knowing a little bit about things that you don't want to do, and that's okay, right? As long as you're not repeating the same mistakes, you identify learning from your life experiences. So, deep breath in, please. Once again, partner moment. Hello, partner. Partner, release your handbrakes. Will you please say to them, partner, release your handbrakes. <laughs> All right, can I have your attention back again, please? Release your handbrakes. Here's what I mean. Imagine if you were born a Ferrari, which I believe you all are, are capable of superior perf uh, performance. In the science of NLP, one of the first things they teach is this. There are no unresourceful people. There are only unresourceful states of mind. Do you agree with that statement? Yes or no? People can never be labeled unresourceful. It's a state of mind that's unresourceful at a given point of time. You change the state of mind of the individual, he's capable of doing far bigger things. That's what I mean by a handbrake. And the two or three most powerful handbrakes that are going to stop you from achieving your highest potential, number one is the lizard brain. The part of the, your brain from evolutionary biology that's still there which always tells you safety, number one. Security, number two. Look after your basic needs. Shut up, sit down, don't speak up. You don't have to be the first one to answer something or do something. Don't take initiative. This is what the lizard tells you, all right? Partner moment, partner, kill the lizard. <laughs> kill the lizard. <laughs> now, how do you kill the lizard? How do you kill the lizard? Action. Can I have your attention back again, please? How do you kill the lizard? By action. It's when you step forward to do something, the lizard will always stay, but you weaken it. Number two, the halo effect. Heard of that? The halo effect. When you see someone who's done really well in any field, stay with me, the halo effect, the light of the ball of light behind someone, we give them a god-like status. Yes or no? This person's born gifted. The god of cricket. My friends from India, where are you? Sachin Tendulkar, the god of cricket right? Or, you know, someone else who's the god of something, you know, I can't be him because he was born gifted. And the latest theory is, if you've heard of some of term called the growth mindset, Professor Carol Dweck is talking about the growth mindset. She believes no one is born, everyone's born gifted and gifted alone will not help. You need to develop your talents. So the halo effect says that uh, someone someone is beyond this person is beyond my reach because he was born special he had access to special skills and i'm here to tell you this that if you pick a particular direction and develop remember the dap the three terms that i gave you desire action and persistence you can be you can change yourself and it's not going to happen overnight but over an extended period of time you can pursue your own direction number three the victim mindset complainers we're constantly complaining about something. How many of you know, know a constant complainer? Raise your hands, please. All right. Some of you are thinking, oh, I am one <laughs> myself. Here's what, the <laughs> Here's what the statistics say. One out of two person is a constant complainer. So if it's not you, look at the person sitting next to you. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. This is what the stats say, right? It's constantly complaining. Now, you know, these guys also have their annual... Um... Yeah. Can I have your attention back again, please? They have a club, it's called the Global Complainers Association. 
Have you heard about it? They have their annual leadership symposiums, how to be a better complainer. They actually have competitions where the biggest complainer of them all wins. So it's given the complainer of the year award. Stay away from them, ladies and gentlemen, stay away from them. Join the Achievers Club. They're a small minority, but find out people who are re doing really well and then go up to them and ask them, could you teach me? Would you be my mentor? And nine times out of 10, the answer is going to be yes. Because these people have risen through the ranks. They know what hard work is like, and they appreciate mentoring and nurturing talent like yourself. Take initiative, but the lizard will tell you, no, no, no. Look at yourself. Who are you? You should shut up, shut up. You should not even be here in this meeting. <sighs> you asking this person to mentor you. You shouldn't even be here. Shut up, sit down, it's safe. No, you got to kill the lizard. Yes or no? Or take initiative, ask, take the risk, take a chance, right? And, and all of this is rooted in the lack of self-worth. Okay? I'm not good enough, and I'm here to tell you this, that you are good enough just the way you are. Take a deep breath in, please. Pat yourself on the back and say, well done, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yes, I am. I love you, man. Yes, you're good. Pat the person sitting next to you on their back and tell them, you're good. <laughs> yeah, do it, please, do it. Yeah. Too many people, ladies and gentlemen, too many people not living up to their highest potential because they feel they're not worthy enough, that they're not good enough. Who am I to be saying this or sharing this or talking about this? No. Who are you not to be doing it? Marianne Williamson, in her beautiful words, she's written, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear as we are stronger than we think we are. We're way too strong for ourselves. It's not, it's not our darkness that frightens us, it's our light that most frightens us. We, psychologists call it the fear of success, the tall poppy syndrome. I don't want to stand out because standing out is dangerous. Hello? The world will not change if you don't stand out. Things will remain the way they are, problems, issues, that you here have gathered in this room here today to discuss will remain the way as they are if you don't stand up and take a stand and take a position on something. How many of you are afraid of criticism? Raise your hands, please. You're afraid of critics. I got a very helpful tip for you. Number one, if you, if you want to save yourself from criticism, don't say anything. Silence. How can silence be criticized? Oh, you'll find people who will criticize silence too. That's okay. Don't do anything. Don't be anything. Don't say anything, don't do anything, don't be anything. You'll never be criticized. You'll still be criticized for not doing anything, right? So <laughs> there is actually no effective way of, be, of protecting yourselves from criticism. So if there is no way, then why shouldn't I take a chance and be myself and stand up for something that I believe in? And the biggest handbrake, so we've got discussed this four handbrakes, which are, number one, the lizard brain, the halo effect, somebody's better than me, they're born gifted. Number three, the victim mindset and the lack of self-worth, but the biggest of them all is the opinion of other people. Groupthink, herd mentality. The opinion of other people, all right? I'm gonna play two short videos for you to reacquaint you. How many of you have ever been done something that you did not want to do that was against your values, but you did it because of peer pressure? It's all right, we can switch the cameras on off for a second, sorry. <laughs> all right. I think you will relate to these videos, stay with me, and my objective is that after you become, because I believe awareness is the first step to change, what is it? Awareness is the first step to change. I hope you become more aware about this and you're able to stand your ground and be assertive about what your values are. Two short videos uh, based on this particular thing that I want to share with you, which is do not be a prisoner to the opinion and practices of other people, especially not the experts. The experts have almost always been wrong. Right from predicting major financial crises to whether an airplane will take off, you know, the experts have almost always been wrong. When Steve Jobs was launching the first uh, iPhone, anyone familiar with the PDA they used to call them? We have different definitions of PDA, public displays of affection. That's, <laughs> that's not the one I'm talking about. Personal digital assistant. Remember that era? There was a company called Palm Pilot. Anyone owned you? Probably you guys wouldn't be. Some of you have owned and seen that. I've seen that gadget, Palm Pilot. The CEO of that company said, 
come on, Apple, we have no challenge from Apple, smartphone makers. I mean, you know, they are computer makers. Apple was only making Mac Macs at the, that point of time. They were not yet into the smartphone category. We are the experts in the smartphone market, the Palm Pilot. We have no competition whatsoever from Apple. History is different, right, from that. So I'm going to play a couple of videos for you, I'll give you a little background to tell you about what is peer pressure is and how we submit to it. And in the process, we lose our dreams. Video number one, a bit dated, but the message is still very clear. Stay with me, please. What they've done is they've hired uh, this company who's running the experiment. They've hired 10 or 12 people to um, walk into a, an elevator, a lift, and to stand in a certain position. Okay? They're hidden cameras. There's only one member of the public. How many? Just one member of the public who doesn't know what's going on, right? And the camera is capturing the effect of their behavior on his behavior, on his choices. It'll be interesting to watch. I want you to convey this message. Partner, don't follow the group. Don't follow the group. Follow your gut. Don't follow the group. Follow your gut. All right? Okay. Now, before I move on, you're gaining something. Is that a yes? Before I move on, I want you to do a simple activity, please. Turn to the person sitting next to you. Turn your chair around, if you can, very quickly. I want you to spend the next three minutes sharing with the person sitting next to you the most important thing you have gained so far is dash, dash, dash. This is where I make you work a little bit. Don't just say dash, dash, dash. You've got to fill in the dash, dash, dash. You've got three minutes to do this. Your time starts now. The most important thing I feel I have learned thus far is shh, go. Thirty seconds. Done. Done. You done? Ten seconds. Great. Give a high five to your partner. High five to your partner. Say thank you. Give your partner a high five. Thank you. Okay. Can I have your attention back again, please? Once again. All right. Good. The next thing I'm going to share with you on the subject of leading a purposeful life, hello, is the statement on the screen. Can we all read it loud in unison, please? Stop chasing success, which goes against everything that you've been taught to you thus far. Chase success, pursue your success, pursue your goals. I'm asking you to stop chasing success and fame and power and money and popularity and happiness because the more you run after these things, the more they run away from you. Instead ask, how can I serve? How can I contribute? How can I make a difference? And then as a result of that, all these other things will follow too. All right, give you a few examples here. The world's oldest marathon runner, ladies and gentlemen, 104 years old, Fawja Singh, was denied an official entry into the Guinness Book of World Records because he could not produce his original birth certificate. So 104 years ago in India, we didn't have birth certificate records. I can produce my passport, which has my date of birth. Guinness said nothing doing. It's our official policy. If you cannot produce your, data, uh, your birth certificate, we cannot issue the original certificate to you. So, now he doesn't speak English. Stay with me here. His coach, who was his interpreter also, was doing all this thing, and, you know, arranging the Guinness people to come over and measure how much time he's taking, etc. So a BBC journalist goes up to him and asks him, he lives in, in the UK, asks him, Mr. Singh, excuse me, you've been denied entry into the Guinness Book of World Records. Can you please tell us how you feel about it? His answer in pure Punjabi, which is his native mother tongue, was Guinness Book of World Records? What is that? Oki cheese on the In Punjabi he said, I he didn't even know a record book like that existed. <laughs> said, I run because running gives my life a sense of purpose and meaning. You know, all these youngsters, they want to have a selfie with a 104-year-old man. What else can I ask for, right? I don't care about your money. I don't care about your records, your official recognition. I run because if I wouldn't be running, I would have been dead by now. At 82, I was slipping into depression, just staring at the ceiling all day long, nothing to do. And I was thinking of committing suicide. And that's when I started this thing, professional running, and my life had a whole new meaning. Once again, in unison, please, don't chase success, right? 
follow your purpose. Malala Yousafzai, youngest, and I think one of the youngest, if I'm not wrong, the uh, official recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. Did she ever chart this course out? I'm going to oppose the Taliban, take a bullet to my head, and then this is going to happen, and then I will get the Nobel Prize? No, that wasn't the plan. Her plan, yes, is that, is that, uh, yes, Malala's from Pakistan. Give it, give it up, please, for the... For the grit and determination, ladies and gentlemen, of this young girl who stood up against terrorists saying, I will go to school, you can do whatever you want to do. And they shot her in the head, and then the rest, as you know, is history, and she stood up for something. So, was she following success? No, she stood up for something she believed in. This is an interesting story about that. I'll give you a business example too. I'll give you a uh, non-profit. These six people uh, were doing something better for the world. But this business example about Larry Page and Sergey Brin. When they discovered this method of the page ranking system, which is at the heart of Google's search engine. Anyone aware about how that works? Which was the discovery that they made. Will you believe this? They didn't have no clue how we're going to make money out of it. So we've just found a way to organize all the information on the internet. Isn't that exciting enough? And they tried to tell investors this thing. They said, no, sorry, you know, but they believed. The first investor believed in their passion for that thing. Said, we'll figure out money later. And it was not until three or four years after that, that Google ads started coming in and they decided to monetize it. They, ladies and gentlemen, were not following success or money or other things. They were excited about what they were doing, right? And then everything else follows you in the process. I was at the Google head office last year to deliver a talk uh, in the uh, Mountain View um, office. And um, what they've done is in the Stanford Museum, they've kept one of the first servers of Google. Anyone ever seen that? If you've been to the Stanford Museum, the first servers of Google is encased in Lego blocks. They did not have enough money to buy a proper server. This is the thing about people who are following their mission by passion. The resources will never be perfect. It is always what you do with what you have, so, right? It's always what you do with what you have. Once again, deep breath in. I will do the best with what I have wherever I am, right? That's, that's the way forward to figure out your growth. This is Muhammad Yunus I was talking to you about. The banker to the poor. Microcredit, and are you guys aware about how microfinance works? No? Raise your hands if you're aware of microfinance. So in countries like Bangladesh, India, other places, uh, Africa, other places, small amounts of money, when I say small, about $10, right? could help people become entrepreneurs, okay? They could start, uh, you know, selling food on the, by the street. They could do something. $10, $20 can help them become entrepreneurs in some way or the other. Producers, rather than being dependent or beggars or victims, right? Interesting thing. I told you not to listen to the experts, okay? He did not listen to the experts because the experts told him, they're not going to give your money back. They'll take your 10 or $20. You have no formal system, right? There are no IDs. There's nothing. It's just working on mutual trust. And guess what? This gentleman proved the world wrong. People not only returned his money back with interest, but also became entrepreneurs and producers where they were earlier only victims. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. I shall not live in vain. Sometimes even the smallest of things that you do will have a huge impact on other people. But it's very important that you do not, you stop chasing success and you have a different perspective. Here are the wrong questions a young person can ask in terms of when you want to do greater good, how much money will I make from this thing? All right, stop asking that question. Money will come if what you're doing is serving the world. Money is the solution, is the reward for solving the problems of other people. When I teach entrepreneurship, this is my one single mantra. Money is the reward you get for solving the problems of other people. The bigger the problems you solve, the bigger the rewards you get. So don't worry about money. Think about, you want big opportunities. How many of you want big opportunities in your life? Raise your hands, please. Find big problems. <laughs> Find big problems to solve and you will, that's a big opportunity to make a difference. Number two, will it make me famous or powerful or how many likes will I get on social media? Those are the wrong questions to ask, ladies and gentlemen. The right questions are, will this contribute to greater good, yes or no? 
will this make a world a better place or not what will i learn in the process of pursuing my goal who will i become in the process of following my purpose how will it change me if you ask me i've been a professional speaker and coach over the last 10 years what is the single biggest thing that i have gained is not the number of clients is not the places i've been to and things that i've done is the person who i have become in the process of walking on this path all right do it for the person you will become do it for the person that you will become not for the rewards that you will get and finally how will i change in the process all right these are the really important things do it for yourself for the person that you will become all right so now i got a little activity for you before we say goodbye once again deep breath in this is not a partner activity this is an individual reflection exercise will you please pen and paper i want you to listen to your inner voice and think of think crazy now this is time to crazy big thinking all right nothing is off the charts nothing is off the limits anything you can you can think about if you knew you could you wouldn't fail in other words if success was guaranteed to you failure is not an option hypothetical simulation what would you like to change in the world what would you like to do what would you like to build create achieve please give it a few minutes so that you walk away with at least some vague idea of your own inner power and your inner calling if success was guaranteed to me what would i like to change who would i like to become you may want to close your eyes to reflect that's entirely up to you i give you about 3 or 4 minutes to reflect on this if success was guaranteed to me what would i like to achieve what wrong will i want to make right it doesn't have to be absolutely clear as long as you know the vague direction i think that'll be good enough okay deep breath in i want you to just give you two words at this moment it's possible it's possible to whatever that is flashing on the screen of your mind right now of your consciousness right now human beings i think if we are capable of dreaming we are also at the same time being given the ability to achieve those dreams once you remove the head hand brakes and every day take the next small step i'm not talking in one big giant leaps right dream big by all means please do but as far as your actions are concerned nothing is insignificant even the small tiny step as long as you're making it in the right direction once again deep breath in please put your right hand up in the air and say every day i will take the next small step i will kill the lizard <laughs> i will take the next small step even if i cannot see all the way to the end right thank you just like connecting the dots right you done that when you were little connecting the dots be true to this dot <laughs> be true to this moment we're talking about a purposeful life but ladies and gentlemen life is this moment yes or no is this moment right here all i'm asking you to do is to be be true to this moment and if you are true to this moment you're true to the purpose right don't worry about how the big picture is going to look like just have fun joining the one dot with the next one as you're driving in the night you cannot see all the way to the end right all you can see is the next 10 or 20 feet correct do you agree with that it, i don't want you to freeze and do nothing just because you cannot see all the way to the end i want you to take the next small step you with me on this whenever in doubt just take the next small step whenever in doubt when you're frozen with doubt or fear just take the next small step and that will help you achieve it and that will activate the biggest conspiracy called the law of attraction heard about that yeah what you're looking for is also looking for you if you step forward to do something the things people resources take a spiritual point of view or take a scientific point of view i'm okay remember the look for the color green exercise you were finding color green because you were looking for it right now you call it spiritual scientific we don't want to get into that discussion but here's when i spread the word attraction i got two words i get the word action in there yes or no so it's not that i sit there and uh, visualize all the good things are happening i'm changing the world no you got to take action i want to share share with you a personal incident that i undertook 
a little event that deeply transformed me, a project that we undertook call, called the Light a Home This Diwali. How many of you are aware of the Indian festival called Diwali, the festival of lights? It's much like Christmas and, and uh, you know, so we, there's huge celebrations, there's lights everywhere, there's gifts and there's food and there's way too much food. Rich people gifting other rich people a lot of more calories, right? Not healthy. So I'm in the shower. How many of you get good ideas in the shower, right? <laughs> put, a, put a board there, <laughs> will you please? I'm in the shower, I have this idea flashing my head. Why don't we think of a different way of celebrating Diwali this year? So it starts with an idea, but then you alone cannot make it happen. You need other people. That's why network rigorously, please, while you are here. And I'm say again, not just adding people on Facebook. Talk to people, find out, get to know them. And so I called my friend, my best friend, uh, you know, who runs a software company. I said, look, could we do something this year slightly different? You know, there are people who don't even eat that evening. And here we are giving these expensive gifts to each other. It's so superficial. He said, why not? You know, so we had this, this, this discussion. So idea in the shower starts from an individual, leads to teamwork involving others. Finally, you commit to action. Now, I'm more an idea person. My friend was more an execution person. He's an entrepreneur, hardcore. He said, sit down with me. This is the first step. This is the second step. So he held me accountable to this goal. And we thought, you know, among the two of us, we'll get a few other people together. We'll raise maybe, you know, if I talk in US dollars, we'll raise maybe uh, three, four hundred dollars for this activity. I put a little message up on Facebook, called a few friends, and you will not believe in the end we were able to raise about three lakh rupees is how much, maybe about five thousand US dollars roughly in a matter of few hours, you know, this, we were able to raise five thousand US dollars in touch. Uh, so this is what we did. We created a kit of stationery, notebooks, you know, food and tea and groceries and crackers and other stuff. And, where, and, you know, it was huge. It was way more than we expected. Where we thought we would touch 50 homes that evening, we were able to walk into more than 500 homes where not even the light was being lit and bring joy to them. 500 homes, ladies and gentlemen. When you step forward to do something, remember this, there are forces which will conspire to help you and go way beyond than you thought was possible for yourself, all right? So time for me to say goodbye and uh, we'll see how many questions we can take depending upon the, um, the uh, amount of time we have left. We've got to go through this six bullet points very quickly, please. Once again, deep breath in. The, it's all about choices. Number one, will you be a player or will you be a spectator in this game of life? That's a choice, right? What's easier? Spectatorship. You can sit comfortably, criticize, find mistakes, etc. Right? What will the lizard want you to do? Be a spectator. I want you to be a player. I want you to be a player. Take those chances. Number two, listen to the still, the voice that whispers inside you. There is a voice that whispers inside all day long, which tells you, this is right for me and this is wrong. No parent, teacher, friend, or preacher can tell you what is best for you. Just listen to the voice inside that whispers inside of you. Number four, face resistance. You will. Remember, if you want to protect yourself from criticism, do, do the three things. Don't say anything. Don't be anything. Right? But if you, you will have to face first internal resistance and then external from other people telling you that can't be done. Number five is very beautiful. Will you spend your life collecting stuff? and more stuff and more expensive stuff and better stuff or will you spend your life collecting stories that's a choice i prefer stories too much stuff already it's boring shopping malls all across the world trust me i'm moving from one part of the globe to another they're all the same the same brands all over you know this consumerism this materialism is there to blind you from what you can potentially do stuff or stories ladies and gentlemen when we leave this planet it'll be the stories that will be remembered Agree? Khalil Gibrani wrote these beautiful lines. He said, All you have shall one day be given. Therefore, give now. So the season of giving is yours and not of your inheritors. Make sure the season of giving is yours and not of your inheritors. And finally, whenever in fear or in doubt, just take the next small step. And you kill the lizard. You weaken the lizard because now you are on purpose and every day you're taking the next small step. And one last thing. Deep breath in please, once again. Can I see a smile on your face please?
<laughs> smiling faces. Okay, this is not working. Why don't you look at the person sitting next to you, smile at them. <laughs> All right. And just one last message. Enjoy the journey. Say to your partner, please, enjoy the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Majid, uh, time is not over, actually. We have a very, very small bit of time for question and answer. Who's uh, with the first question? The lady over there. Can we give her a round of applause, please, will you? Give it up for the first lady. Here's for killing the lizard, my dear. To being the first one to ask the question. This is for you. <laughs> Okay, off we go. Uh, my name is Mumina Mohammed and I'm from Kenya, Africa. Mm -hmm. I have a question on killing the lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a mind reader now. <laughs> uh, I've heard of the statement, follow your instincts so many times. You know, when you're faced with a particular situation mm -hmm. and you need to make a decision, people will tell you, follow your instincts. And as students and student leaders, we constantly face the need to make a decision. True. So, how do you differentiate between a lizard and your instincts? Maybe your instincts are telling you to do this or not to do this, and maybe it's a lizard. It might not, and sometimes it might not be a lizard, it's just your instincts guiding you. So how do you differentiate the two? Yeah, when the fight goes on, you don't know which one is which. Good question. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'll split that answer into two parts. Number one, you need to make your values very strong. As you become, your value system becomes strong, you know what you stand for, and then you know, is this my resistance? When your values become strong, then you know, is this my resistance? Or is, this, or is this my inner voice trying to put me into this direction, right? Is this the lizard that is saying, shut up, sit down, do anything, don't do anything? Or is this I'm being guided to reflect or pause at this point of time? So, two things very important here. Number one is, develop your value system. Know what you stand for. When you said the, um, the decisions take a long time as student leaders, for every leader, decision making is probably the hardest part of what they do. The best way to quicken up your decisions is to know what your values are. You with me on this? Because if you know what your values are, decision making suddenly becomes very clear to you. If your values are not clear and you're changing them to blend in, to fit in, and you're changing your values every time, then yes, you will not know whether it's your resistance or whether it is your inner voice because, hello, we haven't nurtured the inner voice. So the value system will nurture your inner voice, your value system, and you know which direction you're heading in. That's when you'll be able to take quick, more effective decisions. Thank you for asking that question. Over to the gentleman over here. My name is Ian Ryan from the United States. Hi, Ian. And my question today is, have you studied aesthetics? And if you have, how did pursuing higher states of consciousness influence your presentation today? Sorry, how, what influenced my presentation today? Pursuing higher states of consciousness. It does, vastly, vastly, you know. Um, I've always believed if for anything where you want to be of um, service, you want to contribute, there's two parts to this. A, the preparation, you see the notes and other things, the background preparation and everything. But at second stage, it involves letting go. All right? Surrendering. Reminding yourself, I'm not here to impress, I'm here to express. At two very different points of view. That... Um, I've done what I could in terms of gathering my facts and information and slides and everything, but now I must surrender to the moment and allow myself to be guided by a higher force. There's a diverse population in this room. We will have different names for the higher force, uh, you know, but I think as you get in touch with your own self, you meditate, you raise your levels of consciousness, you are guided. You are. You're never alone, you know. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer, one of my favorite, famous, uh, favorite authors, he said this, if you knew who walked beside you at all times, you will never experience fear again in your life. If you knew who walked beside you at all times, you will never experience fear. So yes, raising myself to a high level of consciousness plays, plays a big role. Thank you for asking Ian. My name's Emma, I'm from Malaysia. Hi, Emma. Um, I'm curious about your, your experience. Uh, how did you make that transition from being a hotelier to a public speaker? What, that could take longer what, than... What were the first steps that you took, I guess? You, you to... have time. Okay. Oh, great. Good. So, 
my discontent with what I was doing, gradual discontent. Now, don't take me wrong here. I was very grateful to be in the hospitality industry. I traveled across the world, achieved my financial goals and other goals, everything that I wanted to do. But there came a time in my life when I could visualize myself 10 years ahead. Okay, when you're in a job or a profession, you get to a stage you can see. I could see the general manager of the property, of the hotel. I could see the regional general manager who's only doing number crunching. I'm a people person. I love being among people. And what I saw ahead of me, you know, the next steps of the ladder was, I'm not even going to be based in a certain hotel or resort. I'll have to be removed from here into a regional management role, sitting in front of, you know, numbers and Excel sheets all day long. And uh, I didn't want to do that. So this is what I'm asking you to do. Please project yourselves into the future and see, do you like the image that you see? If not, what am I going to do about it? Okay, so it's not a random one-off thing. I woke up one morning, came up with this idea. I'm going to be a motivational speaker. Very interestingly, remember the look for color green exercise that we did? And I told you what you're looking for is looking for you. I just visited my first client. This is very important. My first client, I know I wasn't making a sales call. I just, he was an entrepreneur. I wanted to see how he's designed his office. Okay, so how the networking, the um, Wi-Fi system and everything. So we happen to have a chance conversation. He's asking, Simrati, you've come back to India. What do you plan to do now? I said, I don't know. I'm doing a few courses, executive coaching and neuro-linguistic programming and leadership and motivation. The moment he heard this word, he said, motivation. I got a team of about 14 people. Can you do something for them? <laughs> that was my first opportunity. Knock, knock, knock. What did I say? Yes. Did I know what I'm going to do? No. <laughs> no idea. Not a clue. But here's what I'm asking you to do, take the next step, small step, take the next small step. And I said yes to that and there was no looking back after it. So it, it unfolded gradually over a period of time. Here's a very important parameter of checking if you're on the right direction or not. When you finish doing what you're doing, do you feel better about yourself or not? If you feel better about yourself, you're on the right track. Keep walking. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that is uh, all the time we have for questions on ground, but of course you can go to simajitsingh.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Simajit Singh!